In today's lesson, we're going to go ahead and create this timer up here. And I'm going to stick to pretty much the exact same format as far as the layout goes. I want to make sure that I always have uh, one digit showing for the minutes. And what I mean by that is if, if we only have one minute that's passed, I want it to show just a one, not like a, a zero one or zero zero one. And I'll continue that way all the way up to nine. Then when we get to, let's say, someone in the last 10 minutes, then it goes to one zero. But for seconds, I want to make sure there's always two decimal places showing. So if we only have one second that's passed, it's going to show zero one. And likewise, on up to zero two, zero three. And then, of course, when we get to nine, it'll be zero nine. Then when we hit to 10, it'll just be one zero. And I'm going to carry that over to the two decimal places as well. You may decide that you don't want two decimal places. You maybe don't want any decimal places at all. And that's fine. We're just going to be using the string dot format to display that. You want to keep track of it in behind the scenes because I do want to factor this into the score and I am going to be saving off a high score. So I might want to actually have that precision. So I'll, I'll keep a, a separate variable for the amount of seconds that have passed and just do all the conversion with string dot format. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in and create that. So I'm going to create a new script. Uh, obviously, it's going to be C sharp. I'm just going to call it timer. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this directly onto my canvas right here. And let's go ahead. We'll open this up. And just like always, I'll go ahead and delete everything. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and create a serialized field. This does not have to be serialized. I do not need to see it in the inspector or access it there. It's just purely for debugging. Later on, I can remove this and just keep it private. But I'm going to call it float. And I'm going to say time pass. Now, I want this timer to start when the game starts, and I want it to stop when the player dies. So I'm going to go into my on enable and on disable and go ahead and put them there. So event manager dot on start game. I'm going to add equal some method, and I'm just going to go quickly put that in down here. So void start game or start timer, sorry. Now it'll do something. I'm also going to avoid a stop timer. And well, that'll do something else. But now that I have those made, I can come up here and say start timer. Then I can go ahead and create another listener or subscriber, depending what language you're coming from, or the stop timer. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that. We need our methods to stop listening. Nope, that was three. But this time around, we need the negative signs and we need to switch this over from an on enable to on disable. Great. I'm also gonna need one more method here and that's to update the display, which is if we jump back into Unity real quick here, expand this down right here. So this timer, this is what we need to update. So I'll jump back into mono develop and I'm gonna go ahead and create that method as well. So update display, I'll just say update timer display. Then the only other method we're actually going to need is the actual update. Just so we can keep track of the time that's passed. Now there's actually a lot of different ways that we could do this depending on exactly what you wanted. Uh, we could go ahead if we didn't care about the fraction of a second, so we could just use invoke. Uh, you can look into using time span. There's so many different ways to do it. I'm just going to do it in a very basic way. Something that you can, everyone can take something out of and apply to whatever game it is that they're working on. So I'm just going to say time passed plus equals means we're adding to it. And I'll just say time dot delta time. So the time between the last frame and this frame. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead, save this off. We'll jump back into Unity. And I just want to go ahead, see it over here. Uh, I just want to see if it's actually starting. Now, we're not actually firing it off on the event. So as soon as we start our game, it should start ticking away. Uh, but there we go. And this is in seconds, so eight point whatever seconds. And let's go ahead. Let's get it to where it only starts counting uh, when the event fires and it will also stop. So I'm going to go ahead and just work it off of a Boolean value. And I do not need to keep track of this in uh, the inspector, so I'll keep it private. And I'm just going to say keep time. We'll save that off and I'll come into start. And I'll say keep time is equal to true. And by start, I mean start timer. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and say, I keep on to say past time. Time passed is equal to zero. 
So I just want to make sure before I start my timer, it's uh, going to be starting at zero. And I also want to start this off at a false value. There we go. So it starts off at false. When the event fires off, it's going to go ahead and start it back up. We're going to come in here. We're going to check to see if keep time. I'm actually going to put it in parentheses because I'll know I'll need another line in there later. And then when I die, I can just go ahead and say keep time is equal to false. We'll go ahead, jump back in, start it back up. And it shouldn't start right away now. But as soon as we hit play, it starts up. So great, we're keeping track of it. Uh, let's fly out, get killed, and it should stop as well. Oh, got nailed. Man, oh, and he missed me. Oh, but that didn't. So there we go, we've died, and we notice that it uh, has stopped. Perfect. So we got that part working. The next part is really the hard part. It's just updating the display and converting everything over to the, the format that we want on the screen. Update, timer display. Every time we increase the time, we'll update the display. I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make an int for the minutes. And I'm gonna make a float for the seconds, because the seconds I wanna have decimal places for, I don't for the minutes. There we go. So how do we get the minutes and seconds out of the time pass that we have. For minutes, I'm going to say, minutes is equal to, and I'm gonna take our math library, mathf, dot floor to int. Now what that does is it takes, for instance, in this case, we're gonna be creating a, a division. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it and round it down. This way here, if we, well here, we'll do it the other way around. Well, without the flooring, we're gonna go ahead and just do time passed divided by 60. This will give us the minutes that have passed because remember time passes in 60. So we divide it by 60. That gives us the minutes. And I'm just going to quickly debug out those minutes. We'll jump back to Unity, start it back up. Oh, we got an error. I can't convert the type here. Let's just, just to make this fast without any conversion, I'm just going to quickly make it a float. We'll just jump back in, go ahead, hit play. Start it up. And here we go, this is uh, how many minutes have passed. And watch what happens after we get to 60 seconds. What's happening is that, well, hopefully we survive this, or two out of 30 seconds. Uh, what's happening is that once we hit 30 seconds, that's half a minute. So once we get to that magic 0.5 minutes, it's gonna round up for us, and I don't want that. I want it to always keep rounding down. So if a whole minute has not passed, I don't want it to, well, think that, well, to display a minute for me. So if we take a look here, we're at 0.5. So to take care of that rounding, this is where we can come in and use that mathf.floor. Now I could just use it like this here, just use the regular floor, but I really want minutes to be uh, an integer, even if for no other reason than to demonstrate the Ability to take that float and convert it to an integer. It's back into int. And I'm not gonna let it run so we sit there and watch it for a minute. What I'm gonna do is just jump straight into seconds. And then we'll just go ahead and do one final output at the end with the string format, just to, to demonstrate how well it looks now. Now for seconds, I am just gonna use time passed. And I'm gonna use the modulus key or the percentage key, 60. And what that does is it goes ahead and divides it by 60 and this modulus key says, give me the remainder. Whatever does not convert into minutes. So if we've got, let's say 90 seconds that are up there and it goes ahead and divides by 60, I'm gonna get you know, a one for being passed in for the minutes. And with this modulus 60, I'll have 30 left over. So it's gonna display one minute, 30 seconds. And that's what we want. Now we're gonna to need to get a reference to that display up top for the minutes in the Unity GUI. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab unityengine.ui. And I will need a serialized field for that text element, which I'm just gonna call timer text. Quickly save that off. I'm gonna come in here, let it recompile. Uh, come on, no errors, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab the timer, drag and drop that right in, jump right back into our script, come down. And just say timer text dot text. So we're getting that text property. Remember, we're grabbing the timer text 
which is the text component. And then we're grabbing the text element of that component. And we're going to say make that equal to string dot format. And there are a ton of different ways to play around with formatting inside of the, the string dot format. Go ahead and take a look at it on Google. But for what I'm looking for, I want to take the first number and only have one decimal place. Now this little zero inside of these curly brackets here, that's just the placeholder. The way that works is we go ahead and say this is going to be minutes. And we're going to have a second one for, well, for the seconds. So anytime it sees this zero, it knows to take this minutes and put it in there. Uh, if we have another one that says one, it's going to take seconds and put it in there. So to move on to seconds, we're going to go ahead, put a colon in there. There we go. So now it's going to display the minutes and the seconds, but it's not going to quite display it the way I wanted. Remember I said I wanted to have it in the form of minimum two decimal places or two digits showing, and then a decimal point with two uh, additional places following that. But we can go ahead and put this little colon here. And we have a ton of stuff opening up here. I already know exactly what I want. I want zero, zero for the decimal places or for the digits, then decimal zero, zero again. And it added a few there for me, not what I wanted. So just like that, one colon zero, zero decimal zero, zero. Let's go ahead, we'll save that off. I'm gonna get rid of this debug statement first. I think that should work. That should be everything we need. Let's fire it up. And now when we hit play, uh, I've got a little co uh, uh, square bracket in there. Let's quickly go fix that. And here it is right here. Save that back off. We'll jump back in, hit play. And of course, hit the play button. And just sit here for a minute and watch it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and click on the canvas. Hopefully I live that long. Uh, I probably should, if I don't move. I guess depending how much I get rammed around. But as we see here, our seconds are now formatted. Like I said, two digits, then two decimal places. Uh, we always have at least a zero for the, the minutes. And I think that'll look a little bit better when we add a, a specialized font. I'm trying to think, maybe I don't want any decimal places shown if there's nothing there to show. Or a minimum of zero decimal places shown. Or digits, sorry, getting them mixed up. I know it's not that bad. With string dot format, like I said, you can go through there. There's so many different ways to display things. That's probably at least a 30 minute video in and of itself. All right, so we're gonna come up to one minute here. There we go, it rolled. And of course, we're still keeping track of all the seconds here. And this is what, we'll, what we would save. And there we go. So we got our timer set up, everything's working. I do encourage you to go ahead and take a look at different ways to go and create the timer that you need. I have done the invoke method before for just keeping track of seconds or any, if you can have fire off every half a second. In this game, I want a little bit more precision, so I am just using time.delta time. But do go ahead and take a look at things like time span or any other methods that you might be able to find on the big wide world web there. But anyway, let me know down below in the comments how you like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>